Hello everyone, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm an intensive care physician who is actually taking care of COVID patients these days. To be honest, it's quite frustrating as we don't have as good robust therapies as we would want and we're seeing way too many people who get sick and unfortunately they die uh, as what we have right now, just in my opinion, isn't good enough. I bring up this topic of melatonin for COVID-19 after several individuals on Instagram went ahead and sent me a couple papers that have come out within the past few months. And, you know, I have quite a bit of interest in the benefits of melatonin because I wrote a a lecture on metabolic resuscitation. And when doing so, I researched melatonin and found out its utilization in sepsis and found that data to be quite intriguing. To be completely honest with you, the first time that I was exposed to the beneficial antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects of melatonin was during a live lecture by Dr. Paul Merrick. Now, I will say this first. If you're looking for robust randomized control trial data to support this article or this video for that matter, you need to look elsewhere. It does not exist. If you're looking for robust data, and I repeat again, on melatonin for COVID-19, it does not exist. And honestly, I don't think it will exist. I'll mention more about that in a little while. But ultimately, nothing that we're giving patients is extremely effective. Even giving patients dexamethasone has a number needed to treat of seven in order to save a life. And that's considered the best that we have. That's pretty frustrating, guys. If we combine melatonin, for example, to dexamethasone and we shrink that number to six, then we should be very, very happy. Now, let's start off with disclaimers. This is not medical advice. I can't say this enough. There's no robust data on doing this. This is just a academic discussion of sorts on things that we could try to see if maybe it, it helps out our patients. And if somebody wants to go ahead and conduct a study on this, I'd be very happy to contribute in doing so. But this is not medical advice, okay? And what I would like for you all to do is to check out the cited papers on my website, eddiejoemd.com. It's going to be linked in the description box below so that you can actually read these papers for yourself and not trust me. I recommend that you do not trust me on this. Read the papers for yourself. They're all free. They're all linked to direct PDFs. Now, this is the first paper that I'm going to be mentioning. It's, it was published in a journal called Life Sciences. Again, This is not the best evidence, guys. These are not high impact factor journals. So continuing on, this next one um, is titled Melatonin Inhibits COVID-19 Induced Cytokine Storm by Reversing Aerobic Glycolysis in Immune System, in the Immune Cells, excuse me, and they do a mechanistic analysis. And then lastly, uh, I'm going to be providing some data from this article, which is published in Frontiers in Medicine, published uh, back in May which is titled Therapeutic Algorithm for Use of Melatonin in Patients with COVID-19. And if you notice, one of the authors here is Dr. Paul Merrick. So before I get started with making the science stuff and trying to make it easier-ish, ha, um, I would like for you guys to please hit the like button as it helps the channel grow. And if I teach you absolutely anything, hit the like button. It's the least you could do to help me out with this. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. It definitely helps the channel grow. So getting back to the actual topic that you're listening to about right now, we need to understand the fact that melatonin has intrinsic antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. And this could potentially help during the cytokine storm phase of COVID. It could help neutralize the generated free radicals from this whole inflammatory state. You know, part of the part of the interleukins and Things that cytokines that melatonin affects include interleukin-6, interleukin-10, interleukin-2, interleukin-8, tumor necrosis factor alpha, etc. All these, all these factors that weigh in on inflammation, melatonin could help affect. In addition to that, it could also help out with oxidative enzymes and oxidative stress. And in addition, it also helps out with the immune response um, by decreasing the neutrophils, lymphocytes, as well as the CD4 count, which in COVID, you know, excuse me, the CD8 T cells, which in COVID could be greatly affected. And we want to try to minimize that in theory. Now, continuing on, the theory is that COVID could also cause damage to the melatonin synthetic pathway. What this means is that if melatonin isn't being produced, then it will not be around to help us fight off this infection. 
and the cited papers state that while melatonin does not directly fight the infection, it could reduce the severity of infection. They also postulate that a, protect, a potential factor as to why the elderly are hit by COVID with greater intensity is that the elderly folks do not produce as much endogenous melatonin. Now, the papers that I have cited go far deeper into the mechanisms, but honestly, if I went into that here with you all, you would be very bored and likely have clicked off this video by now. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to stay tuned. Now, let's move on to talking about the dosing of melatonin. And you see the asterisk there? Yeah, that means there's no data. There's no randomized control trial to go ahead and show this. But if you check out the writer paper, which is titled the one that's titled Therapeutic Algorithm for Use of Melatonin in Patients with COVID-19, they do make recommendations for prevention of COVID-19 in the elderly with comorbidities, excuse me, individuals with comorbidities, as well as healthcare workers. And what they do recommend for patients who uh, have medical comorbidities, medical comorbidities, as well as the elderly, is to give 3 to 10 milligrams 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime. So again, that's 3 to 10 milligrams by mouth, 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime. That includes, again, patients with medical comorbidities as well as the elderly. Then in healthcare workers, and this is the part that, you know, makes me raise my eyebrow. And again, there's no data to support this and I'm not recommending this, okay? But it recommends to give 40 milligrams of melatonin daily, one hour before bedtime. So that's, that's uh, quite a bit of a dose there. Now, they also provide dosing strategies for patients who are hospitalized that, who, who are hospitalized with a COVID-19 infection. For example, patients who are mildly symptomatic, basically those people who are on the floor, they're recommending 50 milligrams by mouth twice daily for seven days. In patients who are in the intensive care unit, in other words, patients who I take care of, they're recommending 200 milligrams of melatonin twice daily for seven days. Again, this is, these are doses far higher than I've ever seen or I've ever contemplated giving patients, but ultimately they do cite papers where they see a, a positive safety profile for the, these medications at these doses. So it has been done before, not for COVID of course, but for other, other clinical scenarios, this, this dosing strategy has been provided and it has been deemed safe. Now, will I be giving patients these doses? Most likely not, okay? Not without discussing with the patients and their families what I'm doing. Again, this is, this is off-label stuff, guys. And again, not medical advice. Did I say that yet? Okay, no, I'm saying that now. So there are some downsides and some adverse effects, although there aren't many. We have to remember that melatonin is sold, is sold as an over-the-counter supplement. It is not FDA regulated. You know, it is a supplement. It is inexpensive and non-toxic over a wide dose range. I have heard commentary before that it makes patients too sleepy. I have not seen this in my practice, nor when I take melatonin myself. But then again, when I take melatonin myself, it's six milligrams when I'm working night shifts and I have to try to sleep during the day. Other known adverse effects include headache, fatigue, and drowsiness. People also talk about them having nightmares. Again, this has not been studied in patients with COVID, but just something for us to discuss and be aware of. And many people are asking, especially when this has become so popular on my Instagram post, where you guys could follow me at MD. That's my handle for Instagram as well as Twitter. I don't honestly think that we're going to be seeing a large trial anytime soon with regards to melatonin. Part of the reason for that is because many institutions, my, my own included, were performing many other trials with other medications, other, uh, you know, other, other uh, treatments, I guess, like monoclonal antibodies and things of that nature, other antiretrovirals. And when you combine different trials, it could it could get a little bit messy because some some trials have an exclusion criteria where you know you can't have another trial involved while that one's going on and things of that nature also you know melatonin is as i mentioned an over the counter drug there's not a lot of financial gain that could be gained from this by pharmaceutical companies and things like that the other issue is that you need you likely need a large academic institution to put aside their current bodies of work to start randomizing patients to get melatonin versus placebo. That could be a pain in the butt. 
Um, and then there's the other thing that when you mention melatonin, and at least when I would mention it in the case of sepsis, you know, something that does have theoretical physiologic benefits, clinicians do a very good job of showing you how far, how far their eyes roll back in their heads. Could you imagine if you, <laughs> how many patients you'd also have to enroll into a study on melatonin to adequately power it? It would be, it would be a lot of, a lot of patients. So to wrap everything up, I hope that this might have sparked somebody to want to go ahead and pursue a clinical trial, even though I just mentioned how challenging it would be and the fact that I'm not going to do it myself. But at this time, I'm currently not providing melatonin to my patients with COVID-19 in the ICU, but I'm strongly considering it because we need to try everything we can. Of course, I would talk to the patients about the fact that we don't know the actual data behind it or have much to support it outside of theoretical benefits. But, you know, when you have these patients who are on high flow nasal cannula struggling quite a bit to breathe, they're, they're pretty adamant to try anything possible, especially something as benign as melatonin to try to help them out. You know, this, this battle against COVID has been a very frustrating one for those of us in healthcare because we have seen, Unfortunately, people who are young pass away from it, and we have also seen people who are old uh, with a million comorbidities get through it. And so trying to figure out who's going to do what, who's going to get better and who's not has been quite, quite frustrating. And as our hospital systems fill up with this with this uh, current predicament, you know, we just need to get everything we can and we need to try everything we can in our patients to try to get them better. I know that the death rates are not as bad as was what, what was once predicted, but the morbidity of these patients who survived this is, is, pretty, is pretty miserable um, to be oxygen dependent, you know, fatigued, uh, end up with some sort of lung fibrosis. You know, if we can minimize that in any way, that would be a good thing. I just want what's best for my patients. And in this case, I'm looking at melatonin because it's cheap, safe, readily available. You know, not not being leveraged by a big pharmaceutical company or something like that. And ultimately, I just want to do the best for my patient. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that next time I come up with a rant like this, you can join along in the fun. Thanks a lot, guys, everybody, for your support. Have a great day. Bye.